Welcome to the Arlington Street Church podcast. Founded in 1729, Arlington Street continues today as a gathering place for progressive people of faith in the greater Boston area and beyond. We are located at the corner of Arlington and Boylston Streets, across from the Public Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. I have a group of friends who have held each other's mysteries for many years. Reverend Jan Richardson is speaking. We have held the joyful mysteries, the unimaginably sorrowful mysteries, the complicated mysteries. We have held the mysteries that have shattered us. We have waited together, wept and rejoiced together, offered and received blessing. We have helped carry each other across thresholds into lives we could hardly have envisioned. This is what we're about, really, all of us gathered in this beloved spiritual community. We bear witness to one another's mysteries. Sometimes fearful, we bear witness and navigate, abide, mourn. Sometimes we celebrate. And sometimes the not knowing really gets to us. In other faith traditions, much is made of hope and faith. One of the things of which I am proudest about Unitarian Universalism is its refusal of cheap certainty. It's also one of the hardest things about being a UU. Facing mystery head on is not for the faint of heart. We are called to courage and forbearance as we, as we walk through the storm of not knowing, what Zen Buddhists call, don't know mind. We are called not to answer the questions for each other, but to accompany one another, living our faith by uplifting and upholding each other in beloved spiritual community as we live the questions. You have heard me tell the story many times of musician Pete Donnelly's standing with me as we prepared to process in for the installation of our own Kate Wilkinson in the Provincetown pulpit. He was in the spin cycle of a difficult time. I reminded him of my deep faith that as Arlington Street's May Cheever of blessed memory loved to say, when one door closes, another door opens. Without missing a beat, Pete intoned, yeah, but it's hell in the hallway. One counterintuitive way to engage with mystery is to welcome it. This Being human is a guest house, says American poet Coleman Barks, inspired by 13th century Persian mystic Jalal al-Din Muhammad Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture still, treat each guest honorably. They may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. 
But oh, how we fear those guests, fear their presence and their mysterious offerings. Most of us would prefer not to answer the door, pretending we are not home. But sometimes they just barge in, don't they? They tromp in, stomping their muddy boots, toss their stuff everywhere, stand in the open refrigerator door, eating us out of house and home, and flatten us. In early December, one of my closest and oldest friends went in for a routine mammogram and emerged with a diagnosis of breast cancer. Less than a week later, she went in for a regularly scheduled colonoscopy and was diagnosed with colon cancer. One day, she appeared completely healthy. Three weeks and two surgeries later, she was in that horrible mix of pain and pain relief and medical terms we'd never heard. We all know some version of this frightful chaos. And while I am so, so sorry that anyone ever has to go through it, in spite of everything, I found myself feeling grateful. In many ways, my friend is lucky beyond measure. The whole purpose of these diagnostic tests was put to work over time and did their jobs beautifully detecting the cancer early. But sitting with the mystery of her prognosis did not sit well with me. I could feel my resistance rising, feel the fight coming on. To begin, she asked the question we should all have taped up on our bathroom mirror or maybe tattooed on our forearm not, why is this happening to me? But, why is this happening for me? Why is this happening for me? My friend got curious. Not, I'm going to Google the living daylights out of this, which is absolutely as far away from sitting with the mystery as we can get but curious, what is this asking of me? Astonishing to both of us, answers began to surface. I'm not very good at asking for help, she said, an award-winning understatement. Suddenly, she had to ask for help. And as family and friends rallied to her care, she experienced herself surrounded by affection and tenderness. There is, she told me, so full of wonder. There is so much love. And then somewhere along the way, mystery became mystery, capital M, a companion on the journey of her illness and healing, keeping mystery company isn't really a choice. It's there no matter what, but befriending don't know mind is keeping mystery company as a spiritual practice. This is American singer-songwriter Iris Dement's Let the Mystery Be. Everybody's wondering what and where they all came from. Everybody's worrying about where they're going to go when the whole thing's done. But no one knows for certain. And so it's all the same to me. I think I'll just let the mystery be. Some say once you're gone, you're gone forever. Some say you're going to come back. Some say you'll rest in the arms of the Savior if in sinful ways you lack. Some say they're coming back in a garden, a bunch of carrots and little sweet peas. I think I'll just let the mystery be. 
Some say they're going to a place called glory. I'm not saying it's not a fact, but I've heard I'm on the road to purgatory and I don't like the sound of that. I believe in love and I live my life accordingly. I choose to let the mystery be. I think I'll just let the mystery be. I was speaking to a doula recently, a woman trained in childbirth who accompanies those who are giving birth towards the end of an empowering, and she said, spiritual birth experience. I loved watching her eyes light up as she described her work, engaging with the arrival of new life, live from the very front row. She went on to say that more recently, she has trained as a death doula, helping to companion someone through dying until the final release. It's the same thing, she said. I welcome them from the mystery. I send them off back into the mystery. It's the same mystery. And she added, that mystery is our home. Why would we ever be afraid? What would it mean to make our home in mystery? The more I know of German-American Albert Einstein, the more I love. The greatest physicist of all time, he was a pacifist and a vegetarian. Campaigning for civil rights, he said, racism is America's worst disease and I do not intend to be quiet about it. In a heartfelt expression of intersectionality, he added, being a Jew, perhaps I can understand and empathize with how black people feel as victims of discrimination. Einstein's curiosity, originality, and breakthrough achievements has made his name synonymous with genius, exhorting us to embrace the unknown and cherish a childlike sense of wonder. Here's his take on mystery. Just one sentence. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious, the source of all true art and science. I am proud to be part of a faith tradition that stands up to certainty and enshrines in the fourth principle of our eight principles, as our choir sang this morning, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. But let's talk about this for a moment. I'm also wary of the ways we can paint ourselves into the corner of rationalism, leaving no room for what we cannot rationally explain. Many years ago, I sat with my parishioner, Rogers Baker, as he lay dying with AIDS. I loved him. I was fighting back a lot of tears. Roger was curious. If he can, he said, when I die, I'm going to give you a sign that everything's okay. I wasn't thinking of that, though, as his breathing slowed and slowed and finally stopped. I was thinking that his suffering was over, remembering that there had been exactly one day over the past several months when he had felt well enough to be up and out and that he had spent it buying gifts for everyone he loved. I was thinking that so, since no one knew how AIDS was spreading, 
and I was burying as many as three people a week, soon it would be my time, too. And my heart ached at the thought of leaving. Rogers and I were both in our late 20s. Just then, unbidden, the room filled with a kind of warm presence. I'm not sure how to describe this. It was peaceful. Maybe if you could feel light, light, it felt like that. I didn't say anything. I was exhausted and bereft. And I knew it might just be something physiological in me. But from the other side of Roger's deathbed, his partner, Preston Babbitt, looked at me wide-eyed and said, do you feel that? Yes, I said. He's still here. He's comforting us, Preston said. He would, I said. And my heart opened to an almost physical experience of grace. That feeling lingered for perhaps 20 minutes or more. We had no sense of time. But as it dissipated at the very moment, the room became the room again. For the second time that afternoon, Preston said, he's gone. The last sense of Roger's presence was gone, leaving behind nothing but his spent body and two people who had loved him deeply, deeply reassured that he was indeed Okay. Who knows what we felt that day? Of course, Preston and I wanted it to be our sign from Roger. And maybe it was just the angle of the sun coming through the window or something about the cranky old radiator or our sadness playing a trick on us. Here's the point. It doesn't matter. It was a mystery. That day we were companioned at death by mystery and deeply reassured. And I will tell you for what it's worth that I have been companioned by mystery countless times at countless deathbeds since. Those of you who were raised Catholic are undoubtedly far more familiar than I with the 20 mysteries of the rosary, moments or events in the lives of Jesus and Mary divided into four categories of mysteries, capital M, mystery, plural, the joyful mysteries, the luminous mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries, and the glorious mysteries. Anna Mary Ward, a devout Catholic and mother of eight, including my friend Mike Ward, had the same answer for every theological question her children asked. She would say, it's a mystery. Anna Mary believed in a lot of things I don't. But our explanation for why she did and I don't all meet there, it's a mystery. Rumi said, out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. I'll close as I began with the words of Reverend Jen Richardson. She writes, I know the difference it makes to hold the questions together. I know what it means to give ourselves to the company of mystery and those who can help us navigate it. Those who bear witness when our lives travel far beyond anything we can understand. 
those who help us to live into the mysteries that unfold over time, those who help us recognize and celebrate clarity when it comes, those who know that our hearts are made whole, not so much by certainties, but by the love that carries us and connects us through it all. Beloved spiritual companions, as we enter into this new year together with a great transition before us, so much uncertain and unknown, I invite you to join me in relinquishing fear and welcoming mystery as our companion. May it and may we prove to be worthy companions, walking one another home, as always, with great love. I love you. Amen. And now for our benediction, I invite you to put your hands over your heart in namaste. I bow to the divine in you. And now, dear ones, in celebration of the new year, these words of benediction adapted from James Broughton. This is it. And I am it, and you are it, and he is it, and she is it, and they are it, and that is that. Oh, it is this, and it is thus, and it is we, and it is now. And here it is, and here we are, this is it. Let us keep this faith, beloveds, and pass it on. The service begins when the service ends. Bless your hearts. I love you. Amen. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace.